we talk about, Mark, the, uh, the Internet of Things. Uh, what does that mean? So it's a pretty popular buzzword these days, and it's kind of a new trend coming on the market of a bunch of connected devices that okay. don't need a separate computer or anything to talk to the Internet and do things. But if you have Exceed, these will make a big difference in your life. Absolutely. So a lot of people that didn't have high-speed Internet in rural areas didn't get to enjoy using these types of devices, and they a lot of them work really great on Exceed. So what do you have there? So the first category that we have are uh, players that play popular movie and TV show titles like Netflix or Hulu or HBO or Watch ESPN. This particular one's the Roku. Um, it can stream about 200 different channels, mm. and it's really popular, easy to use, and frequently, though, it required better than three or four megabits per second, like we talked about. Yeah. It works great on Exceed. If you're an Apple family, there's an Apple TV version that has similar similar things. Uh, this Chromecast from Google is a stick that plugs into your smart TV and can stream those same types of uh, same types of programs. Okay. And even a DVD player, it used to be like when I bought a DVD player, you just plug in a DVD, that's about all it did. If you didn't have a DVD, it didn't do much. Right. Nowadays, most people use their DVD player to stream these popular services and watch Netflix, watch iTunes, watch YouTube share photos with people, and these connected devices all work really well on Exceed. Okay. The next kind of media category that a lot of people like to do is they like to listen to music. Sure. And this little guy here is a Sonos uh, connected speaker. And if you've got a music library at your house, or maybe you subscribe to Pandora or Spotify uh, or okay. iTunes, yeah. You can set it up, have it stream, move it around the house, and just listen to music without a computer attached to it, or lots of people have to plug a cable into their smartphone to play music. This thing does it all by itself. Wow. So, and great sound, I'm sure. It is very good, <laughs> yes. So uh, the third kind of category in the connected home are really, really new stuff around thermostats or refrigerators or smoke alarms or burglar alarms. So we brought a couple of these here. Okay. These are pretty popular. These are these are the Nest. This is actually a Nest thermostat right here. And it is connected to the internet as well as a fire smoke uh, CO2 alarm. And you can remotely monitor what's going on at your house. If you went on vacation and forgot to turn off the air conditioning, you can change the programming on these devices while you're away from the home. It'll send you alerts on your email or your cell phone, give you a text message saying, well, something. Well, I detect CO2 leak or something. So, Where can people get, we have a lot more, but mm -hmm. where people say, wow, that sounds great, mm -hmm. Mark. Where can I get one of those? So all of these devices are at your traditional big box stores, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, those kind of places, okay. as well as Amazon, all the popular online shopping places. Some of them are as cheap as 50 bucks, some of them a couple hundred dollars, but... They're really easy to work with. Plug them in, do a little bit of configuration, and you're good to go. All right. Very good. And then you have, those are kind of some of the uh, audio things. You also, yep. I guess you'd say, what we go into, well, like more of a video yeah, so that, section, if you will. So if you will, this is video and some security section. And so this one's getting a lot of press right now, the drop can video camera. Pretty much plug this uh Pop this guy in anywhere in your house, and you can get video and say if you want to use it as a security system, detects motion, sends you an alert. We've got a deadbolt lock that you can remotely lock or unlock yeah, your doors. Yeah, I mean, this is, talk about that just real quick. We've got a couple of these next two are really interesting, and people can use those in rural America. Yeah. Everywhere, but especially rural America, I yeah. would think. So if you've got this, let's say, on a shed or a garage, and you want to remotely unlock it for a maintenance personnel to get in there, or you left and you're not sure if you locked it, you can check the status of it. Wow. You can have this garage door opener send you an alert. Hey, I didn't close my garage by 11 o'clock at night, and... It'll send you a little alert, and you can close it remotely. They're really neat. If you lost your key, you can use your smartphone to get into the house, and they're really, like or I said. Or again, if you're, just again, an example, if you're in rural America and, you, and someone's coming to fix something in yep. your garage or whatever, yep. you can open the garage while you're in the field, That's for example. Right. That's right. You can set special codes to just one-time use, and mm -hmm. it'll alert you when the person is on site and at your property, and you can detect when your children come home or when they leave the house. So what do you have in front of us here now, Mark? So these are a couple more of the kind of next-gen smart home type things. Um, I'll work from right to left. Uh, so a lot of times people say, hey, I want to be able to control things with uh, my remote device, with my mobile phone. 
That switch at the end there, you can plug anything into it and it measures the power that it uses and lets you switch things on and off. So if you want to plug in a lamp that's not a smart lamp or some other type of device. And this here. That one there is just a standard plug. You plug something into it. You can change while you're remotely, uh, while you're gone, whether the appearance of somebody's in your house or not. Okay. This one here is a light bulb. It actually can change the color of the light bulb, the programming of the light bulb. Really? And it's also linked to this base station right here, which can control many of these devices. This is called the Wink. And a lot of people don't want to have one app for each of these things. They can control them all with one app. This final one here is also uh, Wink compatible. It's a sprinkler system and uh, irrigation control. You can measure the rain and it smartly and intelligently decides when to irrigate or not, but you can also remotely control it if you'd like to change the programming on it or just see how the... Wow, how the and for a, a larger, if you will, agricultural use, that yeah. could be used on a farmer ranch as well? Yeah, so there's there's another class of devices that we're starting to see. Agriculture's actually been in a kind of a forefront position on the Internet of Things, from the John Deere Field Connect, which is connected to soil moisture meters and leaf wetness and... Um, seed distribution, all their machines now are connected to the internet to report on usage and maintenance. Uh, there's generator alarms for your generators, there are weather stations, and there's a variety of things, gate controls, uh, irrigation pump controls, that are specifically geared towards rural America that in many cases people couldn't use because they didn't have good enough connectivity.